Hey everybody, welcome to J&J on Jazz, powered by Jazzwire. This is my friend over there with the trumpet, that's James Moore. And this is Jeff Antoniak, and we're really excited to be with you this week. And Jeff picked a topic that I am really bad at talking about, and at, at also at playing and teaching. So I'm really excited to be humbled, and maybe even embarrassed... Um, thankfully, nobody ever watches anything on the internet, and it goes away as soon as you put it out there, right? Jeff? Ah, so this that's ex- going to be fine. Yes. No. No one's ever going to see this. <laughs> no. Great. So we want to talk to you this week about altered playing, the altered scale, sometimes it's called, uh, or, or, or the altered sound. And I'm really excited to hear what Jeff has to say about this because. This is a big hole in my own playing and in my teaching. Um, it was a topic that was presented to me when I was like, you know, in college, in music school, in, in, in getting a jazz studies degree. And everybody around me in the program was always talking about if it's, an, if it's a functioning dominant, you've got to play the altered scale. You've got to play the altered sound. And, and, and I, got, I was in that sort of thing where people would say, explore the sound, explore the sound. And that never worked for me. And I'm trying to listen to my heroes, and I'm not hearing when they're playing this sound. I'm not recognizing this sound. So, Jeff, I'm really excited for you to take this uh, and, and run with it, and then maybe I can talk a little bit about how I've faked it all these years. So take it away, sir. Wow, really? Just like that? Just now me, huh? Okay, I was I was hoping to learn something first, too. It was your too. idea, bro. <clears throat> Come on. <laughs> all right. Well, my, my experience wasn't that different than James's. You know, like for me, it was like from the Abersole book, like here's the altered scale. You know, when you see this chord, play this scale. And so I, I, I play the scale and it's like sticking my hand in a bag full of sea urchins and cobras. You know, it's like every, it just hurts. <laughs> Right? Like every note just sounds kind of worse than the other. My ears aren't hearing it. Um, as you say, people say like explore the sound or whatever, but it's like, it just sounds like all wrong notes. So it's like, I'm not exploring nothing. I'm touching a hot stove constantly. So I didn't have much luck with it. I did mentally learn it. And you know, we'll put up on the screen a couple ways to think about the uh, altered scale. But I remember memorizing one, flat nine, sharp nine, three, sharp four, sharp five, flat seven, eight. And uh, can't say it did me a lot of good, but, you know, I kind of learned it and (laughs) memorized it. So it's like, man, you know, it's just sort of a hot mess. And then some people would start talking about it's a mode of Lydian dominant. Well, that's not helpful because I didn't know what that was. <clears throat> and then other people said it's like melodic, it's like seventh mode of melodic minor. And I'm like, whoa, I'm going to do the first one. These all suck. And to me, the first one sucked less somehow. So, um, <laughs> yeah, tricky. So for, so I'll just say for a lot of years, I sort of knew that awful formula, but didn't really have any luck with playing the scale. I could play it, but it it just didn't resonate for me. And I like the way you put it, explore the sound that didn't work for me. So what finally started working is when I came to melodic terms with some of those notes, right? When a baby is learning how to speak, the baby does not concern itself with all 26 letters in the alphabet. Are there 26? I think there are. I haven't counted in a while. It's a lot. Let's go with that. So, uh, no, it may be M-A. It may be ma, right? It may be a hand, it, and probably vowels, and you know. So, just with a little bit. So, I remember the first thing I uh, kind of got hip to that gave me sort of a, a more of an altered sound, or sharp nines and flat nines, was something that, you know, I remember hearing Bird and Dizzy playing. <laughs> Sharp nine, flat nine, sharp nine, flat nine. So it's like, oh, that's a melody I've heard. That sounds like something that sticks in my ear. I can remember that. I've seen that before. So I remembered that. Okay, so that's a bit of the altered scale. Then I remembered hearing uh, Illinois Jaquette play an augmented triad, which was pretty hip. So 
So that sound. Um, so, okay, so I understand what a sharp five is in that context. Oh, I kind of have a flat nine and a sharp nine. And then I remember learning, you know, kind of playing a, a sharp 11, like an arpeggio with a sharp 11. One, three, sharp 11, or if you want to call it flat five, an altered dominant arpeggio. One, three, flat five, flat seven. <laughs> So that sound, I just transcribed a bit of a Joe Henderson solo last week, and he uses that exact thing a couple times, yeah. just those notes. So for me, it was piecing together little bits of language that weren't the scale, but they all sort of added up to the scale, right? So not, not going okay. scale first, and that's going to teach it to me, but it ended up being language and melodies and little bits of vocabulary that then I added up and it became the scale. How's, how's that working? Amen. Amen. See, because I know I use this sound. I know it's in my playing. I have never associated these sounds with the scale as a unit. The thing you played there at the top. Or something like that, right? If yep, we're going to yep. resolve to C major concert. I never associated that with an with the altered scale. It I just it was sharp nine, flat nine, root seventh to the third, right? So I was just thinking of it in terms of how the harmony was functioning, and I think mm -hmm. that what's what helped me to get the sound in my ear without dealing with the scale was the time that I was spending at the piano. So I could see, as a non-pianist, how these upper extensions were moving. That was helping me a lot. So you've just validated my approach and made me feel a little bit less, um, <laughs> uh, a little bit less inadequate. Thank you, John. Nice, nice. Less inadequate, that's always good. Yeah, so, <laughs> so vocabulary and melodies. And now, as I've learned more of those, so I've learned some altered licks or little cool sort of triad pair things that add up to an altered scale. So little construction, I, again, it's a melody, it's a fancy angular whatever melody, but it's a melody, it's a lick. So now, I can go back to that scale and think, oh, okay, that altered scale I know. Um, and so let me do that. I'm going to play the G concert altered scale. So I play the scale up and down and put that little melody in there and then resolve it. Oh, by the way, people weren't telling me that. The altered scale is this hot mess of notes that are screaming to resolve, those notes that I'm calling wrong notes. If you don't resolve them, forget about it, right? And I wasn't. I was just playing the scale mm -hmm. thinking that was the thing. Me too. The, the scale isn't the thing. It points at the thing. And the thing is the one chord, right? So, okay. So now I also know, and we'll put it up on the screen, that that the A, or sorry, the G altered scale is also the D flat Lydian dominant scale. So I've taken some time, and if I play that scale, they're the exact same notes. So, okay, now that I know those melodies, I understand the gravity, I know where the resolutions are, Oh, thinking Lydian dominant kind of works. And only in the last year, even though for 30 years I've had people tell me about this uh, melodic minor thing, I really started digging into melodic minor. The G altered scale is A flat melodic minor. Who wants to think about A flat melodic minor? Not me for a lot of years. <laughs> but now that I know some melodic minor sounds, it kind of works. <laughs> The Crimea River Lick. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just going to play that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Right. So again, it's a melody yeah. that's coming from minor superimposed. So um, to me, coming at it from the vocabulary and coming from melodies. Now, this is what we do all day long in Jazzwire is this information, right? But it's not, but the information isn't it because you and I went to great schools, studied with great teachers, got really good information. And here's the thing, we may have missed a day. Maybe we misunderstood something. Maybe the teacher, shocker, is not perfect and explained it incompletely one day, whatever, right? Now you have hundreds and thousands of hours before your next bit of input on the altered scale for you to get it wrong, for you to not get it. And now here are you and I, grown ass adults, uh, trying to figure out how to play altered, right? Yeah. So that's what we get right inside Jazzwire is getting people to work on it every day together, asking the questions, really working on it. In the blue community, we're working on the tune Voyage, altered scales. We just did Erigen and Eider Down, two other great, you know, kind of cool post bop sort of tunes that use this altered sound or can use this altered sound. So I hope people are gonna come in and try, look at the free trial, check out the lessons I'm talking about. Come in for a week and you can listen to the lessons that I'm talking about and see the interactions going on. So yeah, James, back to you, man. So you were, you know, I know you've mentioned how you kind of fake it. So what does that mean? How did you sort of fake well, the altered sound? Well, I think sound? What, what really helped me to get sort of an approximation of the sound or to use the same sorts of shapes was that I was much more comfortable with the uh, with the diminished scales and and whole half diminished and particularly mm -hmm. half whole diminished right and so they have a similar right, feeling right. and a similar sound um, and they contain not all of but most of the, the altered pitches um, and another so uh, another thing that yep. I would do a lot of times to try to wrap my head around the sound it sounded so foreign to me and at the time, if somebody said the chord is G7 or F7 concert and it's going to B-flat major, then I would want to play bebop. That kind of a sound, right? So for me to get any kind of a angular sound happening, I would force myself to play like uh, a half step higher than C. Like, or like, like. Uh, a half step higher than F7. So I might think F sharp major mm -hmm. just as a place to go and deal with, with notes that sounded like they were outside of the key. But what it eventually did was it, it led me towards those diminished s scale sorts of sounds that are similar, right? So uh, blues and F all the time. Mm -mm. <laughs> Like that kind of a sound in the fourth bar, right? So, I, I, just those little snippets yep. of the scale, I would, I would, I could, I could wrap my brain around them if I did, if I thought about it as a different scale that I was more comfortable with. The other thing that used to trip me up, and if anybody out there is really a, a, a tried and true student of bebop, like Jeff and I both are, what also messed me up, like you said, Jeff, was that nobody talked to me about how to resolve, and for me. The scale didn't have enough notes, right? It it was missing one, uh -huh. right? So it and I needed that seventh note of the scale so that when I landed on the root again, I'd be on a strong beat, yeah. So I found myself putting passing tones in the scale just to try to wrap my head around it being a line unto itself. So those were the two things that I did. I, I, I sort of repurposed my brain to think about half or, uh, half whole diminished in place of that. And that got my teachers off my back. Uh, sure. That's close enough. And then, <laughs> and then I would, I would, I would move <laughs> a half step away uh, and, and just deal with notes that didn't sound right and try to figure out how to resolve them. Tim Hagen's helped me out a lot with that. And in, in a, in a few lessons, just play, play in an uncomfortable spot and try to resolve. So that's kind of how I bounced around this sound mm -hmm. for like 20 years. <laughs> so there you go, man. No, well, that's it. And I mean, 
the thing is, I I think the way you learned it, if if we go back in the history of jazz and some of the earlier players, they didn't have Abersold that I was messing with or their jazz studies degrees. They were just trying to figure it out and use their ears and what they heard on the gig the night before from someone else. They'd go home and try to figure it out the next day. And, you know, so so it wasn't really codified. So the, you know, so the cool thing is I'm sure if we heard you doing this so-called faking it, I bet it was sounding pretty good because, again, you're playing with great sound and great time, and you're playing melodies that are comfortable to your ear, which, by definition, is going to be some pretty good jazz, right? So, uh, yeah, I think that's good. So, um, so for the people listening out there, so first of all, hopefully this is some commiserating mm-hmm. and giving you a sense of why this scale for almost all of us is tricky. Or we get the scale, but now how do we make music out of it, right? So again, getting some really good guidance on this and not just here's a YouTube video, have at it kind of guidance, but coming back to it regularly. This takes, uh, you know, this takes some circling back. Uh, and, and I was, and we both mentioned using great melodies. Well, what are those? Well, of course, that's what I want to help you work on inside Jazzwire. So we've got hundreds of people there from 25 different countries who are doing this work together and asking the questions and working together lessons Mm -hmm. each week. Um, but then the important part is how we work together. So yeah, this, uh, that is all something I wish I would have had at any point in the last several decades, it would have been uh, pretty nice and helpful for me. So hopefully this starts the conversation for some of the folks out there. And uh, I do want to mention, we haven't mentioned it yet, Maryland Winter Jazz is coming up in a couple weeks, January 21st through 23rd. Now, uh, we may have a spot or two left for that. We only have 25 people coming in, any instrument at all. So it's not specific to trumpet or saxophone or anything. We have Melissa Aldana as uh, a super special guest from Chile. We have Rogerio Boccato from Brazil. We have Eric Alexander uh, from the United States, Chase Sanborn on the trumpet from Canada. So a really incredible international faculty. And we're doing this online. So wherever you live on earth, you can attend. I know online jazz workshop, what's that like? We've done uh, over 40 of these over the last couple of years. Really powerful. We know how to get you really fired up and get you playing and uh, some great information. And this is going to be one of the topics we're talking about. We have an elective on this exact thing. So uh, I hope uh, you'll join us on that. And uh, you know what? Let's leave it there. We got these, you know, I think I think we stopped somebody from crying. I think there was probably somebody out there who was going to have a really bad night with the altered scale. And I think maybe we... Me, you stopped me games. from crying. Now, I'm, now I feel like I'm validated. Oh, I, I haven't been completely wrong. And I'm inspired to get inside the sound and and really go back and try to figure out a new way to think about it so thank you for stopping now you may call me later and make me cry about something else like you usually do that's fine that's fine it's fine but for now i feel good about myself thank you perfect and by the way i want to give a shout out to my friends in Canyon, Texas. I was at West Texas yeah. A&M University a couple weeks ago. Um, did a did a really cool residency with them and taught a bunch of workshops, everything from entrepreneurship to uh, to improvisation. Soloed with their two big bands. It was a blast, and I really loved the town and really loved the school. So I want to thank uh, Doug and James for having me down there, and uh, and I hope we'll come back and uh, and you know play some yeah, altered stuff. That's, I'm glad time. you had a great trip. Thank All right, you, everybody. everybody. This has been a lot of fun for me. Yeah, I sure did. All right. Take care, Bye. everybody. Have a great day.